Hey everybody, my name is Mike Montgomery and today I'd like to show you how I built this DIY fold-out wall-mounted workbench out of 2x4s and plywood on Modern Builds. I started this project by building out my leg assemblies. First, I cut eight pieces to 32 inches long and then two pieces for my stretchers. After that, I grabbed some glue and two and a half inch wood screws and connected two of those 32 inch long pieces together to create posts for legs. And I really like using these Power Pro wood screws because you don't need to pre-drill a hole before attaching your boards together, which is great for two by four projects. I used my circular saw and a 12 inch speed square to cut half lap joints 10 inches up from the bottom of each leg, the size of a two by four. That way the stretcher can nestle in there, it'll look nice and be more sturdy. After making a whole bunch of cuts with the circular saw, I then used a sharp chisel to get the rest of the wood out of the joint and smooth out the bottom so it was flat. And it's always handy to have a board with you, that way you can sneak up to the line where you need to cut so your joint isn't oversized. On the top of each leg, I measured an inch and three quarters in from each edge and then used a quick DIY compass so that I could mark a radius on it and then cut it. I wanted to use my circular saw instead of a jigsaw so that I would avoid deflection and get a really square cut. I did the cut on each side of the leg, that way I could cut all the way through, about three quarters of the way on each pass. Getting rid of this material on the top of the leg is what's gonna allow it to pivot in the frame so it doesn't have to be perfect. After I got a rough cut, I came back with 80 grit on my random orbit sander to smooth everything out and I think this method gave me better results than what the jigsaw would have. Next, I used a half inch drill bit to create the pilot hole that our bolt is going to go through. It's gonna go through the frame of the table and through each leg, and it needs to be five and a half inches long. Mine's a half inch bolt. The legs are gonna be locked in at the top, so that's why I'm gluing and screwing this stretcher in at the bottom of each of the leg assemblies. I made sure everything was super square, and then I locked it in with more of those Power Pro two and a half inch screws. I'll be sure to leave a link to these along with everything else I used and free plans down in the description. But now that our legs are complete, we can start moving our attention to creating the top of this workbench. I cut my two long pieces to 71 inches and then three shorter pieces at 30. On the ends of each of my long boards, I used my pocket hole drill bit to create pilot holes and a recess for where I want each of my screws to go. This bit's really convenient because it's got two sizes on the end and a stop collar. I used these 90 degree corner clamps to hold my frame together before screwing it and I made sure to use plenty of wood glue, that way it didn't all soak into the porous end grain and dry out. After attaching that center stretcher, I came back with the pocket hole drill bit one more time and I used that to create recesses on the bottom of the frame so I can use the same two and a half inch wood screws to connect the frame to the plywood top. And I'm making my top, you guessed it, out of three quarter inch radiata pine plywood, my favorite. And I'm cutting it to about 35 by 73. That way it extends past the frame one inch on each edge. On a traditional workbench, I would probably have a couple more stretchers in the center of the table for support, but since I'm gonna have legs folding into it, I used a lot of screws to make sure it was secure. And speaking of the legs, here you can see how they nestle into the frame and fold down. Really, really awesome. And really quick, before we move on, I'd like to give a big thanks to the sponsor of today's episode, Squarespace. Squarespace is your one-stop shop to build your own website. And the best part is you need zero website building experience. I'm serious, if you can upload files and drag and drop text blocks, you are well on your way to a one-of-a-kind website. Squarespace's designer templates are designed to look great on desktop, tablet, and mobile, no matter where your customers find you. Plus, they are packed with great features, like no limits to the number of products you can sell in Squarespace stores, built-in search engine optimization, and really thorough analytics. Plus, if you follow the link down in my description, that's squarespace.com slash modern builds, you can build out your entire Squarespace site before entering any of your credit card info. And then when it's time to make your website live, make sure and use my code modern builds for 10% off your first site, store, or domain through Squarespace. That's squarespace.com slash modern builds. Now let's get back to the build. Now that we know our leg assemblies are a snug fit, which is a good thing, I used that same drill bit to create a pilot hole in the frame so that it aligns with the hole in the legs. 
Then I can feed my bolt through and attach everything with a wing nut. And I made sure to use washers on each side. And I was surprised to see how sturdy everything was after it was just finger tight. I'm getting excited. This thing might not even need a stretcher on the bottom. If I had a drill bit other than a spade bit that was about a 16th inch larger, I probably would have used that. It would have given me a little bit more wiggle room, probably without reducing strength any. Oh, and speaking of, once I used a wrench to tighten down these legs, they were locked in. Check it out. I just hopped up there and tested the wiggle, and it was minimal. Definitely good for building. And I wasn't expecting this, but I don't think that I'm gonna need a stretcher between the two legs. That feels really sturdy. Instead of doing nothing though, I did add these stop blocks on the tops of the legs. That way it had a positive stop at 90 degrees before I locked everything in. I also figured this would help with racking a little bit. I used pieces of a 3 8 inch wooden dowel to backfill all of my recessed wood screws. Then I used a flush trim saw to trim them flush. None of this is necessary, but I like the way it looks and it helps take two x four construction up a little bit. After sanding the entire workbench to 120 grit, I screwed a cleat onto the wall that our table is gonna rest on. I made sure that this board was level and then I folded up my workbench. Using a wrench to tighten and loosen these bolts probably take an extra 20 seconds, but it does make everything way more secure and I would much rather do that than have a stretcher on the bottom of the legs taking up space. I went super basic with this turning handle to keep the table locked against the wall. And with that, our folding workbench is done. Space is at such a premium for me in my shop that being able to fold this workbench up and store it on the wall should be awesome. And hopefully for a lot of other people too. There's gonna be a huge upgrade compared to the sawhorses and plywood that I'm used to. And since it's so compact, it's definitely staying in the shop unlike the last workbench build that I did, which I moved up to the house. And I wanna keep my building area clear, that white backdrop behind me, so I'm gonna be storing my workbench vertically on this wall of my workshop. So as always, thanks a million for watching. I've got a couple of workbench build videos right here, and you can click subscribe right here. And we will see you next time on Modern Builds.